Welcome to Better Daily Life, where we are moving forward one percent better every single day. Download the app and supercharge your journey at betterdaily.life. Now it's time to ditch facts and get facts with your host and my dad, Alex Van Houten. What is up, BetterBit family? This is Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Happy Wednesday. It is Wild Wednesday, and we can do whatever we want. And one of the things that I want to do is say, happy fifth day of the Faithful 40 Challenge. Keep up the good work. You guys are posting amazing things in your commitment post between mindset, nutrition, and exercise. All the encouragement that's going on in Better Daily right now. It's very heartwarming first of all. And second of all, it's inspiring because I know that each one of us are moving forward on our 1% better journey in the way that we need to. So keep up the good work. You guys are doing an awesome job. And today for Wild Wednesday, I am sharing an episode from, it's actually from the last season of Defining Dad Bod almost three years ago. Wow, it's hard to imagine it's been that long. But almost three years ago, there were a lot of people talking about how we stay safe amidst a pandemic that was shaping up to be, well, let's just say that there were a lot of, well, no, let's not just say that. Let's say this. It was showing us that there were many, many more risks for those with pre-existing conditions than those who didn't have pre-existing conditions. And so my call to action, there are a lot of people are saying, stay safe and all those things. And and I was like, great, don't be stupid. Sure, stay safe, fine. But that's not the only thing we need to do. One of the things we need to do is make ourselves harder to kill. And so that is the name of this episode, 15 Ways to Make Yourself Harder to Kill. And I know it sounds morbid, but but here's the thing. Your body is amazingly adaptive. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with an owner's manual, though. And so when when we're talking about being in a position where you have to deal with something really high stress or you have to deal with a new pathogen like coronavirus or covid-19 or or it's it's not just new pathogens like right now in our community there's a lot of sickness going around and there's going to be a lot of sickness going around for a number of reasons which I can rant and rave about later but strep throat and stomach bugs and and colds and all that stuff and you can't like the only way to keep yourself from being exposed to this is to put yourself in a bubble but the other way you could deal with things positively is give yourself the best chance to fight the things off that are coming after you and to bolster your body's defenses and improve your body's ability to adapt and be resilient and you can do that Those are things you can do. However, many people don't know how to do them. And so that's why this list is put together. 15 ways to make yourself harder to kill. That is to say, here's 15 ways that you can bolster your body's natural defenses. And I'll post the uh, episode and the notes here in the comments. But there's one thing I did want to highlight. And it's people don't like to talk about this. It's so funny because <laughs> I'll be training somebody and they'll say, okay, look, hey, TMI. And then they'll tell me what they have to tell me. And it's usually about poop. <laughs> it really is. It's usually about, they'll say, hey, TMI. But for the last week, I've had, you know, bloating and gas and diarrhea. And, well, that's not good because bloating and gas and diarrhea are evidence of a problem. And many people just live with it in an embarrassing and painful way. And that's unfortunate. And that's actually one of the things I talk about in this episode, 15 ways to make yourself harder to kill. I say, hey, your fecal matter is a message. I know nobody's saying that, but I'm saying it. I'm telling you that what's coming out of your body is a message about how how things are working on the inside. And that really matters. I was working with a client recently where, uh, <laughs> good morning, Robin. Good to see you. Good morning, Leslie. She says, wow, I turned this on and now you're talking about poop. I know you can leave now. You can leave now if you have to. It's not something people like to talk about, but it really matters because there are not many things that are a direct message to you 
about what's happening to you on the inside. But this is one of those things, okay? So I have a client I'm working with, and, you know, we, we were talking about poop. And he's like, I don't know what the deal is, but things have not been normal or okay for a couple weeks now. I'm like, I'm really glad you told me. Let's let's talk through it. And he hasn't changed anything about his nutrition. And so I said, you know, hey, have you, is your workplace, do you have people at work who are sick and sniffly and coughing and stomach bugs and strep and that sort of thing? He's like, well, yeah, you know, I'm not sick, but yeah. And I'm like, well, did you know, did you know that an immune response can affect your digestive tract? A lot of people think that pathogens cause symptoms, you know, like, you're exposed to, let's say, an adenovirus. An adenovirus is a, a common cause for the common cold, okay? A rhinovirus can do the same. So you're exposed to adenovirus, and, well, it's it's proliferating in your system. A virus kind of hijacks cells and makes copies of itself, and it's it's starting to infect your system. Did you know that the adenovirus doesn't actually make your nose stuffy? Like, when you're in the process of a common cold, the adenovirus doesn't make your nose stuffy. It doesn't go to your nostril or your sinus cavity and increase mucus production. It's actually your immune system that creates that symptom. Your immune system is responding to the adenovirus being in your system. Your immune system is trying to fight it off. And in the process of fighting it off, your immune system ramps up mucus production. So the stuffy nose and the, the pressure in the sinuses and all that stuff what that's doing is your your body's actually increasing the amount of mucus and the white blood cells in the mucus so that the viral infection, the virus that's in your sinuses and that's in your nose, that your body has a chance to fight that off with the mucus, the, your, your nostrils being full of mucus and your sinuses full of mucus. That's so that your, your white blood cells can touch every, every little inch of, of that area and just, you know, beat them up and eat them up and get rid of that adenovirus. And then you kick the common cold, hopefully, if everything's working the way it's supposed to, and then you're good. But a lot of people don't know this. It's your, it's your immune system. That creates most of the symptoms that are uncomfortable while being sick. Fever, headache, vomiting, diarrhea, sinus pressure. All of those things are actually your immune response, not the pathogen. It's your immune response that's doing that in response to fighting the pathogen, right? Otherwise, if your immune system wasn't working, you'd have none of those symptoms, and then the virus would do whatever it wants to to you, and then you die. And that's not good. So that's why it has to happen. Better to have a stuffy nose and a headache than adenovirus kick your butt and lead to a bacterial pneumonia infection because, well, your lungs are so destroyed. So that said, your digestive tract, your large intestine, your digestive tract, your large intestine, uh, your immune response, there's a huge, powerful immune response in your large intestine because your large intestine is actually the place where your body contacts the world with most exposure, right? Uh, I know that's inside of you. It sounds weird. People think that your skin is the most contact you have with the world. And yeah, kind of, but it acts as a barrier. Your skin is a very, very thick barrier. It's not permeable. If you put water on your skin, it's not like it's going to soak in. <laughs> might, maybe a little soaks in. Not a lot, right? If you rub oil on your skin, only a tiny bit's going to get into the world. It's not going to get into your bloodstream. In fact, we call things toxic substances if they can permeate your skin, if they can pass through the skin. Your large intestine, on the other hand, your large intestine is permeable. It means that, you know, what goes into your large intestine can go into your bloodstream. And so a huge portion of your immune system is actually concentrated on your gut, your large intestine. And if you're in the middle of a very intense immune response, then your large intestine is just throwing stuff right through that system. As soon as food comes in, it's like, get out of here. You know what your large intestine's primary job is? To pull water out of the food you're digesting. There's a few other nutrients and stuff that might pass through there, but for the most part, your large intestine's job, after your stomach has added hydrochloric acid, after your your small intestine has, has used enzymes to break everything down into a watery substance, your large intestine's job is to pull water out of the food, rehydrate the body, and then pass solids through. Well, if your large intestine is in the middle of an intense and immune response, it's not doing that job. It has a hard job, which is don't die. 
that's the job. Your immune system's working really hard. Don't die. Like, fight all the stuff that's in contact with the most raw and exposed part of your body. Fight all the stuff off. And you know what? This whole absorb water thing, don't worry about it. Pass that stuff right on through. <laughs> and so your poop is a message, man. A lot of people don't know that, but it's true. And this is one of the things that I talk about in 15 ways to make yourself harder to kill. Pay attention to how things are passing through. It's not just like, oh, I had diarrhea today, or oh, I haven't been very regular, I'm constipated. That's not just like a symptom. That is a message. That's a message to your body. It's a message you need some rest. It's a message maybe you need to add something to your system to support it. It's a message that perhaps you're going to be dehydrated. If you're not pulling enough water out of your food and your body's spending so much energy and hydration just trying to digest your food upstream, right? It's a message. So to my client who is like, hey, I'm really wrestling with this. I'm like, look, buddy, there's a couple things we need to do to support your digestive tract. One, if you've been through an intense immune response recently, then you need to rebuild your microbiome. So he's taking Saccharomyces boulardii. It's a probiotic I recommend to help increase the microbes in your gut. Second, he's drinking aloe juice on a regular basis. Four to eight ounces of aloe juice is actually really helpful for healing a raw gut. You know, if you have sunburn, you rub aloe on it. And why? Well, aloe actually has some stimulating response for helping cells recover, rejuvenate, and proliferate. And so, so aloe is super cool, a lot of great polyphenols. You can use that in your gut. And so he drinks four to eight ounces, not 48, four to eight. <laughs> not 48. Don't drink 48 ounces of aloe juice. Four to eight ounces of aloe juice. And then he, right, we're also talking about how to, uh, how to help the gut in, in the sense that, um, resistant starches and some short chain fatty acids that you can find in some good high quality butter. So, uh, resistant starches are, are like cold cooked potatoes. You could do the same thing with rice, cold cooked rice. I know it sounds weird. You cook your potato, you refrigerate it, and then you eat it and put a little butter with that. And what you're actually doing is you're feeding short chain fatty acids to the large intestine. So the gases that are produced in the large intestine are often hydrogen sulfide. That's why it smells so bad, by the way. And hydrogen sulfide, the, the gases produced in the large intestine is a reflection of the, the bacteria that are in there. But if you can feed the bacteria in your gut, short chain fatty acids and resistant starches, you'll, you'll find a lot less hydrogen sulfide production because you're feeding the, the bugs in the gut that don't produce hydrogen sulfide. And so they can, you know, after an intense immune response, you can rebuild your gut. And last but not least, if you're having regular digestive tract issues as a result of, of an immune response, you know, you haven't changed anything weird. It's not like you're eating strange allergens or whatever, but you're finding your digestive tract is, well, overly stimulated and raw then when all else fails, you need to fast. You need to fast. You need to give it a break. Imagine that your poor digestive tract is raw, and then you just keep adding food to it. <laughs> Don't do that. Give it a break. Give it a break. Ask it not to process any food for a little while. Shut the plant down. Give it an opportunity to recover. Many people haven't developed the ability to fast, or the ability to function well. Fasting is probably more more to the point. And, and that's something worth developing. It's worth developing the ability to go 24, 36 hours without food to give the digestive tract a break and allow it to recover from the damage that it sustained during an immune response. So I'm going to post the link to that 15 ways to make yourself harder to kill. I'm sorry for the poop talk today, but I'm also not sorry because somebody's got to tell you, and I don't mind being that guy. Uh, Jonathan gives me a weird face. Good morning, Jonathan. Good to see you this morning. Janet says hormonal ups and downs are also not kind to the digestive tract. That's very true. That's very true. And uh, spoken like a, like a woman who has experienced some menopausal symptoms that that is exactly right. Like when your hormones are doing funky things, your digestive tract also has a hard time keeping tabs on it. It's, a, it's different from an immune response, though. There's different reasons for that. Blood flow is one of them, but I can talk about that on another day. So guys, be good. Be good to your digestive tracts. Give them a break when they're acting crazy in this season of illness. Make sure that you make yourself harder to kill. I'll post 
that episode here. Guys, this has been Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Thank you for joining me on Wild Wednesday, where you never know what we're going to talk about. And uh, I promise next week we won't talk about poop. So until then, it's just 1%. You got this. Thank you for joining us for your 1% better. Be you, just better, in mind, body, and spirit. Go to betterdaily.life, download our app, and check out our five-star coaching resources. We all have a cross to carry. It's lighter when we do it together. Go to betterdaily.life today.